Marco, how are you doing? Hey, uh, I'm fine. Um, it's the end of the week. So honestly, I'm going to take a flight tomorrow morning to, to, to a very short holiday in London. But everything is fine. And you? I'm fine. A bit tired. Uh, um, you know, at work we start this uh, uh, movement uh, challenge and we have until mm. the end of January to be active. We have a team uh, and it's all okay. around Finland from the same company, people that are challenging uh, each other or actually it's a challenge for uh, myself maybe because I haven't been okay. active in those last two years and um, it started last Wednesday and uh, I collect uh, as um, training, uh, walking uh, and uh, whatever activity that uh, that you get uh, your body moving. Uh, okay. I collect three, 350 minutes so far mm -hmm. of activities. And today I was uh, doing again a bit of uh, gym. And yeah, pretty pretty well, I will say. A bit tired because of okay. work uh, after the work week. It's, it's sure. Bit. But uh, sure. no one care about uh, what I'm doing. So let's <laughs> talk about you. <laughs> Uh, sorry for the question, but I mean, <laughs> no, it's a it's a question. Maybe someone is also interested in what I'm doing, but sure. the mo let's okay. let's go to the most important things. Uh, okay. So, you are uh, musically super active because uh, you have your bands and you are involved in many projects, so you have no time to rest. <laughs> It seems like as you can as you can see uh, with my with my face, it seems like <laughs> I, have, I have no time to rest. No, just kidding. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's start to talk about temperance uh, because the the new album was released uh, some weeks ago. Uh, one month ago. Yeah, and uh, we talk with Michele about the album. I, I saw I saw a little bit part of the interview you did together. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> But I want to, to hear your point of view about the the album, the the thematic, the making of. Uh, tell us something. So, um, first of all, uh, Hermitage, the new album, is a concept album. And, uh, it's the very first concept album of Temperance. And honestly, it was a dream, uh, dream from myself since a very long time, because uh, I think six, no, sorry, five years ago, we released a track called Daruma's Eyes Part One in Of Jupiter Moon's album. And already back then I have the story in mind, but for sure it was too long and too complicated to put in just one single track. That's the reason why we call this one Part One. And the Part One is just a sort of explanation about the meaning of this doll called Daruma from the Japanese culture. Um, and then for a long time, I thought, and also the other kids like, of the band, they thought, okay, we have to release a concert album, blah, blah, blah. And for and during the last years, honestly, some people, um, not every day, but uh, every every month, ask, but there will be a, a part two. And finally, we made it. I'm very proud of this album. Uh, we spent a lot of uh, energies, honestly. Uh, because there is a story I wrote in the story that's the reason why we released also a book uh, a limited edition and luckily it's already sold out and um, we we try to follow the story to write every single track that's the reason why in the new album there are 14 tracks uh, because there are 14 chapters in the uh, in the story in the book but uh, it was a it was a big challenge but honestly, I really can't wait to do a new concept in the future. I don't know if there will be a part three, but for sure, sooner or later, I'm quite sure we'll do at least another concept because I really enjoy the time I spend to write every track to create some connection because that's the most difficult part of a concept album. You have to create a connection between the yeah. tracks. For example, uh, you have to put a melody, not only one track, but also you have the tracks to make even more make even stronger connection yeah because it uh, it should be like a, a continuation of the the, the, the previous exactly. song uh, it's more like uh, 
when we talk about the concept album, uh, sometimes I think like uh, it's, you know, a music musical and you have all those songs coming. It is, exactly. Uh, honestly, tons of people uh, think that's a musical and tons of people ask us, but do you will, are you planning to do uh, some special shows in a theater like a musical? And I say, honestly, I don't know. I don't think so. Because it's quite difficult. But at least the next year, since it will be the 10th anniversary of the band, maybe we'll try to do at least one very special show, maybe to play Hermitage, the old tracks. Uh, uh, but still early to think about that because we have tons of plans. But let's see. Let's see what happens. And uh, in the album, there are several guests also. Um, mm -hmm. did, did you add the, the, the clear idea uh, about who you want in the album or how, how it worked? So for some people involved, yes. For example, for Fabian Erni from Elvezia. Uh, every time, I don't know if the pronunciation in English is Elvezia or Eluvezia. I don't know. What do you think? I, I don't know because I, I have always been calling Eluvezia. <laughs> because in Italian, because we used to Italian say Eluvezia. So I but have I no don't... idea what's the right pronunciation. So if someone wants to write in the comments exactly. and uh, clarify it, please uh, free. Because the thing, free is, to do it. the thing <laughs> is, uh, a few years ago, uh, someone uh, told me it's not Elvetie, it's Elvetie. And I said, okay, Elvetie then. But it seems like it's not right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, by the way, um, by the way uh, Fabienne was one of the first names came to my mind, honestly. Uh, she's such a, an amazing singer, in my opinion, one of the most talented singers of our generation. Because for this album, we decided to involve uh, singers from our generation. I, I mean, we have tons of heroes like Michael Kiske or other singers like this, or Tobias Summit, for example, is one of my personal heroes. But the thing is, they are totally from another generation, an older generation. And that's the reason why we decided to involve Fabian, for example, and she was one of the very first names on the list. Um, then Alessandro Conti from Twilight Force and Trick or Treat. Uh, first of all, Alessandro is one of my best friends in this business. And um, I still think uh, Alessandro is probably one of the best power metal singers in the world, together with Tommy Johansson, for example. And uh, I still think Alessandro is very underrated in the power metal world, unfortunately, yeah, I have to yeah. say. I, I'm uh, and then amazing. it's amazing. And most important thing for me uh, is such an amazing person, a, a wonderful person. And no matter if you are the best singer in the world or not, but sometimes there are tons of vessels. And uh, Alessandro is is one of a kind. So he's a very fantastic guy. Um, then uh, we have Laura. Rafaela from Faun, and honestly, I I was never a big fan of Faun. And uh, when we start to think about the female singers, I have other names in mind. We were in touch with other singers, uh, but then nothing happened. And um, I think more or less one year ago, I saw Faun in Milano, and I was quite impressed by Laura. So I decided to get try to get in touch with her, and. She, she's uh, another fantastic person, I have to say. And um, the thing is, uh, her character is perfect for her kind of voice because um, is a special creature in this Hermitage world, in the, this very fantastic and fantasy world. And Laura is perfect for this. Um, and last but not least, mm -hmm. In the middle of the songwriting process, uh, we thought that could... back then we thought something like, okay, it would be great if we'll try to if we will try to have a special person as narrator. And then uh, an idea came to my mind, uh, and I tried to get in touch with Arian Lucasen from Aerion. And first of all, because he's one of our personal heroes, and I have to say. His last work with Aerion Transitus, in my opinion, still one of the best albums from Aerion. 
again, very underrated in my opinion. But uh, this album inspired me a lot to go on with this idea of the concept album and musical like Hermitage. So um, I tried to get in, get in touch with him and it, it was easy. But at the same time, Arian was not mm, sure about it because he said something like, man, my, my voice sucks. <laughs> so <laughs> we can try, but I don't know. But I pushed him a lot and I say, trust me will work very well and people will go crazy for this because it's a from my point of view it's also sort of tribute from temperance to area uh, at least we tried yeah yeah and uh, you did a really great work and um, i really you. like the album i enjoy so congratulations uh but thank you so much let's talk also about serenity because also <laughs> the new album came out this month at the beginning of November, uh, Nemesis Haiti. And, uh, well, what can you tell about this album? So, first of all, this is my, fav my favorite, no, sorry, my first album with them as official member, uh, because for the previous album, The Last Night, I was involved in the songwriting process, and that's it. I record also the backing vocals, but I was involved in the some writing process we uh Georg and me we wrote I think four or five tracks together and then uh we start to work on Nemesis ID I think more or less one year and a half ago and again what was the same stuff because mm, some writing some writing but in the middle of the some writing process they said you know could be great maybe if uh you can be part of the band and come on tour with us, hear the stage with us. Because first of all, they for something, we really need another guitar to have a even more metal sound on stage, or one more singer on stage, because with Serenity, we have tons of backing vocals, tons of vocal layers. And then uh, the thing is, um, sometimes uh, the, the other guitar player, Chris, is involved with Beyond the Black and they are trying to play a lot all over the world. And you know, sometimes the schedule is crazy because you have to go on tour with Serenity, but maybe the week after you have to go with Beyond the Black or in the same week. So, um, and I think this is a very cool solution because in this case, the band can go on. But for sure, we will try to, to play all shows, all tour, all together because we are not just a band. As Temperance, we are also very good friends. And... We really enjoy the time we spend together on tour, but together in general. And yeah. so uh, one year ago, more or less, I joined the band, but we announced my uh, my time with Serenity just six months ago, I think, more or less. And uh, it's very cool. Um, now we'll do the double tour for me, uh, Serenity and Temperance. But we have tons of plans. For example, in two weeks, we'll go in Japan with Serenity. And it will be the very first time for Serenity. They never play there. I played there already with, with Temperance and back then with Secret Sphere. So um, I think it will be very cool. But we have tons of plans for the next years. Yeah. And you are, in fact, uh, you were talking about the double double tour for you. Uh, Temperance and Serenity together uh, in the European tour in February is going to happen next, next February. So... How many hours are you going to be on the stage with the bands? <laughs> no, more or less, I think mm, two hours and a half because um, with Temperance, I think we'll play around 50 minutes and with Serenity, one hour and a half. So more or less. And in the, in the afternoon, for sure, with Serenity, we'll play during the VIP session, a uh, very short acoustic show, but just two okay. or three tracks. So, a lot. I will play a lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> so you are training as a, to be fit uh, for uh, for February exactly. to, to be able exactly. to play so much. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and then let's talk about uh, uh, Fallen Sanctuary. Uh, mm -hmm. You release uh, an album in two thousand twenty-two. Yes, and there was a single release uh, this year. At in January. Yes. 
Yeah. So that's because it it was. It's, oh, sorry. Yes. Go go ahead. Okay. Um. So yes, we released a single this year because it was the bonus track, uh, only for the um, only for the vinyl edition. But since it's a very limited edition, we decided to release this track as well uh, for the digital market. Um, for sure, Fallen Century is just a sort of side project. But we really love the fact that with this band, we can push the power metal elements. We are not able to push with Serenity or with Temperance, for example. And it's very cool. Um, we, are, we already wrote the second album. Um, hopefully we'll be able to release the album next year on 24 uh, but the schedule is difficult because it seems like the next year we'll play a lot of shows with sorry with Temperance a lot of shows also with Serenity for sure and then we really would love to play also some shows with Fallen Sanctuary to, to celebrate the release of the new album so but we are thinking about the possible release yeah, so there is a lot of things going on. A lot. Yeah, and you also play, you, you had a solo acoustic tour, and you had a 14th yes. show around Europe. Yes. And uh, uh, what, I know nothing about uh, the, your show, acoustic show, so tell me, what what were you playing? What did you play during those those shows? Uh, the, the very cool thing to be alone on stage, stage is you can decide whatever you want to play and you can change the set list every night because for example for sure uh half of the set list was just some temporal tracks in acoustic version uh but then in some show i played um one serenity track i played a couple of fallen century tracks but also other stuff for example uh for half of the tour in, in october i played one track that taken from the music called Notre Dame de Paris, uh, just because I really love the musical, and I thought, okay, let's play this one. I love um, it too, my favorite musical. <laughs> uh, which one is your favorite track from this musical? Uh, do, do you want me that uh, we talk about the uh, the French version or the Italian version? <laughs> uh, I honestly, I prefer the Italian version. So I will say I, I love both. I have... Uh, well, when the Italian version came out for me, it was a bit like listening to the song in Italian was a bit weird because for, uh, I think, two years, uh, I I have, I was listening that in French. So it was a bit weird. Okay. But uh, uh, Luna is my my favorite. Ah, I love this one. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so one, but... touching, but also uh, Il Tempo delle Cattedrali. Exactly. That's the song I played for half the tour, El Tempo del Cattedrale. It's still one of my favorite tracks. Uh, unfortunately, I saw the musical just a couple of times, not more, uh, but it's still one. In Italy, for example, you know for sure, but it's the most successful musical ever. Yeah. So it's yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's an amazing musical. And uh, I think uh, Riccardo Cocciante did an amazing work with the songs, so... Just chapeau. <laughs> chapeau. Eh, in French. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> so you had a lot of uh, of songs using during this uh, acoustic tour. Uh, in in which place did you did you play? Um, it was a normal rock tour uh, because basically we played uh, in rock clubs. Uh, it was not only me, but also Spider Accomplice, a duo from from California. And then, as a liner, the, there was Jokstra, the guitar player of Wisnik, and Brandon Gibbs. Uh, he was also a singer for Poison and a couple of years ago when the original singer was sick. But it was very cool. And uh, as I said before, it's very cool to be alone on stage. I mean, I really enjoy the time with the band, but in this way, you can take your time. You can change the set list. For example, just before the tour, I did also I did other acoustic shows all over Europe, sort of private events, something like that. And I played totally different kind of music. For example, I played, I don't know, I think it wasn't right from Halloween or Forever from Stratovarius 
what else? Uh, I played, I think, in one private show, I played uh, the, the song from Marco Mengoni. I don't remember the title now. Due Vite. Due Vite. Okay. Okay, yeah. Mm. The, the one but that you was... put in uh, Eurovision this year. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, it was very funny. And honestly, I think in the next years, uh, besides the tour with Temperance and Serenity, I will try to do even more acoustic stuff because yeah. uh, it's very easy to manage. Uh, also, you don't need a lot of stuff. I mean, I was just with my backpack, my guitar, and the box with the merchandise. That's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's uh, uh, at the uh, energy level with the audience, it's a bit uh, different. Totally. It's more, more intimate. It's, it's very intimate. I mean, for sure, as I said before, I did also some private event with also five people. Uh, but uh, I did this kind of show. Very intimate because you can also talk with the people even more than metal show. I mean, with Temperance and Serenity, honestly, we used to talk a lot. To, we, we used to entertain the people a lot during every track. Just to create something between the people and, and us on stage. But uh, in acoustic, it's even more, for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Do you remember how we met? Yeah, I mean, it was a it lot was, of years ago. It was more, more than 10 years ago, I think. I think around 15, could be. No, it's... No? I think it was 2000... Then maybe or even before. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Two thousand ten is thirteen years. Yes, more or less. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm not sure, but uh, it. it but was... I think it was in. Yeah. Say it. I think it was. Uh, I don't remember the name of this this venue, but I think it was in. I think rock club. It was not the rock club, but it was. Oh. It was a. Uh, I am not sure. Was a uh, uh, Magazzini Giordano? Was that in Pordenone? I am not sure. No, but I think it's Rock Club. It's not Rock Club. Rock Club was in uh, Ronchi dei Legionari. Ah, sorry, no. Then was the uh, Deposito Giordani. Deposito. That that was. <laughs> yeah. Ah, sorry. No, no, no. Just because I I made a a mistake. I. I supposed to say deposit instead of rock club, but rock club was very close to this one, or no? Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, sorry. Deposit, deposit, sure. Yeah, and it I was it the was... Elven King uh, Red Silent Tide release party. With yeah. Secret, but also with Trick or Treat, could be? Uh, no, it was not Trick or Treat. And who was the first band? I don't remember, but you the were... First, the... the first band was was the, the previous band of Fabio from Elden King. I don't remember the name. I, ca I can't remember, but... Maybe yeah. I can remember also the, the date, because it was November 2010. Uh, but I don't remember. It was something, not one single word, the name of the first band, even more. I used to remember almost everything yeah. about this. <laughs> So I was there. Actually, it was my first time that I was uh, on a guest list for a game. Ah, okay. And uh, because uh, a friend of mine that was uh, uh, managing things for uh, a web page called uh, uh, PN Plus Pordenone Pew, um, okay, he asked me if I because I was going to to see the gigs anyway, but he was like. Sure. Uh, do, do you want to to go and uh, just write a review of the gig? And then I was cool. like, okay, let's try. Let's try. So I think it was my first time writing a review. I'm not a big fan of writing a review because I don't like to uh, to comment on, on other works too much. I like just to comment on positive things, not negative things uh, when it comes to music in particular, art in general, because I think that I'm not no one 
to to comment i i i can say say i like or not something but uh, i don't feel that i'm not better than uh, than the others because i i i no, no, but i think it's another thing because usually you know uh, the thing is you have to put your words and that's it for sure uh, i mean at the same time i'm not better of anyone we are the same people everywhere in my opinion but the thing is uh, it's very cool in my opinion try to do a review for an album or a live show the thing is sometimes musician uh, they really love to receive very amazing reviews but when they receive a very bad review they go crazy at least for me uh, uh I would say I don't care. For sure, I care. But I mean, when I when I receive some very stellar review, ten on ten, the best album of the last ten years, in my heart, I I think okay, but this is not true because in my opinion, in the last ten years, uh, it's just an example, but tons of amazing albums uh, uh, will be out. But the thing is, uh, I'm quite sure. No one of Temperance album is the best album of the history of music. Because in my opinion, I don't know, Let's Zeppelin 2 or Masters of Reality from Sabbath, it's another level if you have to compare these albums to the album we are releasing today, but also because of the period of time. Uh, but yeah. okay. You yeah. Know what but I mean. yeah, it, it was then uh, that I, I was there for a reason <laughs> and I okay. enjoyed the show and. Uh, after the show, uh, I think w with my friends also we went to to ask for uh, photos and we ask also the photos with you. <laughs> so I think yes, I remember, I remember. And then I think I add you on Facebook. That could be, could be. Yeah. Also, I took a really terrible photos at the time. Uh, every time nowadays uh, when I take photos, they are they are not perfect still there is still a lot of work to do but compared to what i take at the time sure. it's uh like also be night and day but also because you remember uh in 2010 we have no this but for example we had just this old camera and uh, i remember the time because uh i used to travel with my old camera to do some memories, to do some memories, but my pics was horrible every time. <laughs> I always had the camera with me, even when I was going out on the Saturday, Friday night with friends, and my friends were like always, oh, Christina is taking photo of us, uh, they were drunk or in uh, embarrassing moments, and they are all on Facebook because the world needs to, to see those those moments but now that when when i moved to finland they were like oh we miss your photos we've missed th those moments oh. and yeah but we have great memories but with the photos <laughs> how many years ago you moved to finland 10 years ago 10 already yeah yeah it's been 10 mm. and one month uh -uh. Yeah, it's good. I, now I am. The interview is the opposite. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, and is is going good there? It's going good. Yeah, I cannot complain. Uh, you know, uh, it was my dream to move to Finland, and uh, so I did. And since then, I have oh. really released other uh, dreams that I had uh, when I was even younger. So. If I will go back in time, I will do the same things again. Even though, you know, it's not always easy when you move somewhere. And no. uh, at the beginning, you have to, for example, for work, you have to take what it what it sure. offers. So I did for five years uh, a job that I didn't like. Uh, it, it was uh, all the situation I was... Uh, in a situation of um, burnout but uh, because I am uh, who I am I was like I'm not upsetting that uh, there is something that uh, that is not physically going on with me but uh, uh, looking back uh, now I'm 
I have released all the all those things. So also this, it's um, okay. you know, it's a journey, and uh, sure it is. And uh, but the, the entire life is a sort of journey, in my opinion. Yeah, and uh, it's it's beautiful uh, living uh, in a country that the metal is uh, is a normal thing, mostly. It's a normal thing, exactly. Yeah, and but uh, are you in in Helsinki or outside of Helsinki? No, I'm I'm. Uh, how many hours is? About three and a half hours, maybe. Ah. What's the the biggest city close to you? Uh, well, the city, the biggest, if we talk big, big compared to Italy, is not. But uh, uh, Tampere is the the closest one because it's ah, okay. one, one hour and forty five minutes with the okay. train or the bus. But can can I ask you something? Yeah. Well, why you decided to move there and not in Tampere or Helsinki? Well, <laughs> the idea was to move to Tampere, but uh, you know, life happened, and uh, I I came as au pair in uh, in Pori, and uh, then uh, then I find job in Pori, and that's okay. it. And that's it. And uh, okay, uh, but yeah. So, there is a at, you, the uh, at the beginning there were a lot of uh, you know gigs uh, that there were uh, every every weekend there was something then in 2018 uh, three uh, clubs that were i was going always rock clubs uh, things like this uh, shut down like many other in around the finland also in helsinki a lot of things just closed i don't know why but uh, now something maybe maybe Younger people are starting listening again to me. Okay. So let's hope. And uh, the, there is a uh, here in Pori, there is this uh, this guy, those two guys that are organizing uh, uh, gigs uh, once per month. Uh, it's a bit, it can be really extreme metal, uh, can be hardcore, can be power metal. Yeah. So I have seen a lot of bands and, uh, you know, those uh, maybe more underground bands, those that are not well known, and uh, there are a lot of good ones. Uh, so okay. I, I have I was I was really impressed last uh, month. Uh, I went to see the gig. I I I knew I I, I did an interview with this uh, band that for me w was new, even if I met them with the previous band they had. Okay. And uh, the the I went there. Principally for a psycho work that was playing there, so more on the power metal side. But this band is uh, an extreme. They they are mixing. They are so technical. Okay. I just fell in love with their music, and uh, okay. I just keep listening to their hippies. So living in Finland is uh, for me because ev everyone is different. For me, it's beautiful. Sure. <laughs> Oh, very cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but uh, uh, beside my my life in Finland, let's let's go. Sorry, sorry, sorry for the questions. I, I think that maybe some people watching this interview are are also interesting. Uh, why I'm living in Finland? Actually, I'm going to do a video about uh, my life ah, in cool. Finland because people ask all the time. So I was like, why maybe, not? Maybe you will inspire some people to move. Uh, from from yeah. Italy to Finland, who knows? I never know, and uh, I hope to inspire think... people to believe in their dreams and to follow their dreams. That's that's the point. Exactly, and honestly, I think that nowadays probably if if we have to compare this period of time to ten years ago, I think it's easier nowadays. Yeah. What do you think? Well, maybe it's easier, but at the same time, it can be a bit more complex. Because there is so many foreigner people, uh, in particular, ah. someone mm. wants to live in the in the capital area, so mm. it it can no, be tricky. Right. But uh, if people want to live in uh, other places uh, that are not that uh, much populated, let's say, okay. like for sure they can uh, they can find uh, a place uh, easily. But I have one more question and then we can change the topic. But uh, I mean, you are able to speak English, but are you able to speak Finnish as well? 
Yeah, Finnish is my everyday language. Uh, let's ah. say that I think I speak better Finnish than, than English. So, ah, really? I think ah, okay. that I'm more fluent in Finnish, even if, uh, yeah, of course, there is always the accent. Uh, I, I don't sure. like to listen myself when I speak uh, uh, Finnish. Uh, I can accept when I speak English, but when I speak Finnish and I hear my accent is always like, <laughs> I, I hate it. But about it People say that oh, it's it's cute, and uh, th there are two of my clients. They say that oh, you don't have an accent. I'm like, what? I have an accent, and it's clear that I have an accent. <laughs> but I think in general, this is a typical thing for for us as Italian. Also, in my English, my accent is quite strong. But I mean, uh, for sure, it's better than a few years ago. But I cannot change it. A lot, honestly. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I mean, it's not extreme, but I mean. Yeah, you know, about this metal pizza is also a way to accept my 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 accent and how I speak English sure. because I always been like, uh, you know, uh, afraid about my English. And there were yeah. a few times that someone comment on the video interview of, uh, commenting about my accent and uh, things like this but you, you know what and this is i think i i learned during the years and in my opinion tons of people have to listen to the sentence i will say now because the the key of the secret of english not only english but other languages is that you don't give a shit and you have to try to talk with people, no matter if your accent is very strong, no matter, because otherwise you will never talk another language. I mean, for example, That's I true. speak English, but my English, my English sucks totally. Uh, I'm trying to learn an, another language, but my language skill is, is not the best part of me, honestly. I'm very slowly on this, but I don't care. And that's the reason why I'm talking with everyone, especially when we are on tour. I don't care if I, I, I don't know the way to explain something, but at least I, I really want to try because that's the only way to push myself to do something better. That's true. That's true. And uh, it's it's the same with uh, every language. You have just to go ahead and and try because otherwise exactly. you are never going to improve and uh, i think that uh, uh, maybe with english it can be that if someone is a uh, english speaking nat native can be a bit more picky but sure. uh, everywhere else when you try to speak the, the 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 language of the place people are really really flattered about it they are really happy sure. and they are uh, up to help you to improve and they but are as, not going as, to to be to be mad to Maybe. complain exactly but that's the same thing for italy for example uh, i'm still living in italy and every time a stranger guy or girl uh, she always trying to talk with me in italian but they're not from italy also if they say for example for the verb uh, the stranger people they used to use the infinite stuff instead of the normal time okay but it's fine because it's not their, their language so i'm totally open and, yeah. and i really appreciate and it's easy to understand sure, sure. the more or less exactly. what we are saying exactly. so exactly exactly yeah but let's go to metal music uh, so okay sure. <laughs> uh, uh when did you start to listen to metal mm. I think when I was something like 13 or 14 years old, because first of all, I was a big fan of, uh, I, so first of all, I started to play guitar when I was 11. Uh, then around 12 years old, I discovered Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. And Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath are still some of my favorite bands ever. But then, step by step, the next, I think one year later, I start to listen. I remember the first album I listened, and back then I wasn't, I was not a big fan, but uh, Iowa from Slipknot and uh, Rock in Rio from Iron Maiden. Um, it was quite cool. 
it was a good start because then I start to listen to um, Stratovarius, for example, Halloween, and then my my big love for vocals, clean vocals especially, starts. So, yeah. So, what's your favorite band if you have one? Um, no, not only one, honestly. And every month, change. Um, my favorite band is changing. Yes, exactly. Uh, if I have to choose one band right now, I would say Sabotage. Yeah, nice. And uh, what's your favorite album if there is one? Okay, but just because I I said sabotage, I I would say streets from sabotage. Nice. And uh, about a concert, what was the first gig that you you have seen live? Mm. You mean in metal music, right? Oh, well, in general, in general, let's take a oh, okay. In general, I think. Some Italian rock bands when I was just 11 or 12 years ago. Persil, old, sorry. Uh, I think Verdena from yeah. Italy. They they were probably one of the first show I ever saw back then. Uh, but then my... No, 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 okay. And then when I was 14 years old, I saw Jeff Scossato. Uh, playing some months in tracks in a very cool venue, not so far from my place. Um, I think this one was the first metal scene I saw in my life. Okay, nice. And what's the best, uh, the one that you remember for some, remember more for some reason, and in your opinion, the best performance that uh, you you did see? Live, I think um, Brian Adams. I saw him a couple of times and I was speechless. I was extremely impressed by him because I think now he's six years old, something like that. I saw, I saw him before the pandemic, I think 2018 and 2019, because the first time I was like this for two hours and I said okay I I really have to see this guy again and um, but I think Brian Adams is the best show I ever saw in my life okay not not for the production not for the stage but just for the sound because the production yeah. was quite normal yeah yeah you know uh I think always that uh, um yeah, it's sometimes great that on the stage uh, many things happen. There is a graphic and uh, sure. fire, and but uh, there are some artists that they need nothing on the stage. They they they, exactly. they put the 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 stage on fire just with their presence, their way of being, exactly. the the energy. So you and the the thing is the thing is with Brian Adams, I think it's quite easy for him first of all because the set list was fucking amazing was unbelievable and then um his performance on vocals was amazing i still have the goosebumps it, so it's crazy yeah i still uh, it's you know i have been listening for brian adams for i don't know how many years but for for but you know all the tracks yeah, and uh, I have never seen him live yet. Maybe one day have, I will have the chance. You have to go, and then you, I'm quite sure you will send me a message, and you will say, you know, you, you were right. <laughs> Pretty sure that uh, it will happen. <laughs> yeah, but let's go with my magic jar. No, it's not magic. <laughs> Nice. The random. Let's pick a topic and let's see what we are Very going cool. to talk. Let's see. I think this one feels good. Cartoons. Uh, so, what's what's your favorite cartoon? I think Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball. What? For for my for my generation in Italy, 
for 90% of the people is Dragon Ball. The, the cool thing is, one week ago, um, I discovered they just put Dragon Ball on Prime Video in Italy. So in just one week or 10 days, I saw the entire saga, the first saga of Dragon Ball. Uh, what, what's Zeta in English? Fuck. Uh, Z. Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, Dragon maybe, Z. maybe. <laughs> yeah. I think so, I think so. Dragon yeah. Ball Z, and that's so the entire saga of the Saiyan, the first, <laughs> but the entire, I saw 30 episodes, I mean, it's just 15 yeah. minutes. I, I remember about Dragon Ball that after school, I was getting exactly. home, and there was Dragon Ball, and after Dragon Ball, maybe there was something else, like, I think there was a, sp I, I don't know why I have this, uh, this memory that there was Dragon Ball, and after that, there was a Spanish uh, series, uh, Paso Adelante, something ah. like this. <laughs> I, I think it was, I think it was Dragon Ball, Simpson, The Simpson, and then probably Paso Adelante or this, this kind yeah, of shit. Yeah, there, there was something like this, yeah, that mm. always was after school TV. <laughs> And I think we have the same age, right? I haven't heard you. What What did you say? No, no. I think we have the same age. Yeah, I, I'm 30. What age I am? I'm 37. Ah, 37. Okay. I, I don't know why, but I suppose uh, you were from 88. I'm 86. Ah, okay. I'm 88. Okay. Yeah. So you are younger. Are you? You look you look younger than oh 86. thank you <laughs> oh really yeah well most of people say that I look younger so that's good <laughs> it's the cold you know I I suppose to say same thing <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what's uh, your, what's your favorite cartoon my favorite cartoon uh I actually have to, I have no idea about the the name of because they are both from uh, actually. Japanese anime mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know what's the name in English so I'm going with the title of Italian and the first one that is related uh, also why I live in Finland is uh, Alla scoperta di Babbo Natale <laughs> a very old one a very old one so it's yeah. it, it's something that uh, I remember I was they didn't show that much in the TV uh, but I I I was so stuck with that, and I, I was in the, you know, there was the snow, and there was, I don't know, it was something, and then uh, there was uh, the other one uh, was uh, Hillary, uh, the gymnast. It was like doing. I don't know. Read me gym gymnast gymnastic, and uh, I start artistic gymnastic because I was watching that cartoon. But I don't remember this one. Yeah, maybe it was more, not not really, not many boys were watching that <laughs> sure, <show>. sure. <laughs> But I I think that I have, you know, when it comes to cartoons, I watch so many and so different. Uh, I, if I think when I was a little kid, uh, so let's say five, six years old, uh, I was watching with my brother uh, Kenshiro. <laughs> ah sure sure so not, not mean, only, if you think now now it's not really for children <laughs> no for sure it, it was very extreme also back then i have to say i was not a huge fan of kenshiro but uh, i remember i saw tons of episodes back then for sure yeah and i really love about kenshiro i love uh, the italian uh, uh, jingle and i think it's beautiful my my, my. <laughs> I'm not singing because I'm not a good singer, so you can sing if you want. <laughs> but uh, let's let's get another another one. Let's see yes. what what we get. I think that here in the middle there is something something. Oh, so you are getting the. I think this is the same <laughs> the same as uh, Michele or was okay. it? But it's aliens and the UFO. So alien send what UFO UFO ah okay 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 so do you believe uh, in the existence of uh, aliens? So it's a strange topic. Uh, first of all, 
um, for sure, I don't believe in the ET stuff uh, in this but kind of don't aliens. Don't you with... think that there is someone with the with the finger that uh, lights up and say, uh, uh, I don't know, is in English, uh, um, telefono casa. <laughs> Phone home, yes, exactly. <laughs> telephone casa in Italian, it's telephone casa. Uh, honestly, I don't believe there is a real alien with this face, but at the same time, I'm quite sure there are tons of things uh, in the universe. Uh, I don't think there, there, is, there is another kind of humanity uh, like us, honestly. But I'm quite sure there are still tons of things to discover out there. And I have to say it's very exciting because for a very long time, one of my dream was, and probably still is one of my dream, um, try to reach the moon, for example. Yeah. Maybe one day. But there's, no, there's nothing on moon, so maybe Mars will be better. Yeah. Or someone else, some other plans, planets, not plans. <laughs> Maybe there. someone has other plans to reach some other planets. Yeah. It's Hopefully. A, you know, sometimes I think about uh, when I was in the elementary school and uh, we had a book and there, we, there was something about the future and... It was always like uh, we are going to move to another planet and live uh, sure. to another planet. Or there was this that uh, uh, I remember it was uh, like the street you at you, you didn't need to walk because they were moving. <laughs> so then I remember since I was uh, from the school when I went home, I had to walk up hills. I always had this dream when I had, uh, you know, uh, a lot of books with me at school. So I was, this will be so nice that I have just to stand and then just go to the, to the just, left to go. But yeah. But just because I think we saw too many movies like this. But for example, um, we just say something about Dragon Ball. But in Dragon Ball, there are tons of different stuff from technology future or other planets the yeah. namek planet for example <laughs> true true and i think you know uh, in it at least in italy we grow up uh, watching all those uh, cartoons and sure. uh, i i just picking sailor moon because it was one of the yeah. biggest for me and yeah they they, they are from another another planet <laughs> I think every girl in Sailor Moon is from yeah, a different because, planet. Uh, Sailor Moon is from the moon. She is the, the queen, exactly. uh, princess S S Selene. And uh, that then uh, it was, I think it was Selene, her name, uh, re real real name from the, uh, from the kingdom of S Sailor Moon. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, if... I'm not sure if I'm right, but I have this memory that uh, Selene, Selene, uh, it comes from the Greek word from moon, but I'm not sure. I have no clue. If there is someone from uh, Greece, uh, please uh, let us know. <laughs> Those important things in life. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But yeah, th th there were a lot of things uh, also. I don't know, watching X-Files. Uh, exactly. And that's the thing, because our generation grew up with X-Files. or And I think the new generation grew up with movies like, for example, Interstellar. Or um, what's the name of the one with, with Matt Damon? Um, you know? I can't okay. remember no, the name. But I, yeah, I remember. Okay. that one. <laughs> yeah, so... Mm. So, and the thing is, uh, they're, they're growing up with this kind of movies. So I'm quite sure tons of people is totally into this kind of stuff. Yeah. And also, you know, for us humans, it's like always uh, 
we like to think that something exists. We we exactly. want to believe we want to believe in something. Uh, uh, we 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 need to to have uh, our imagination well active. Um, sure. And until there are no evidence that say there is nothing, everything is possible. So you you are you are free to to believe in whatever you want until there sure. is evidence <laughs> because then when there is a, the evidence then it's a close the case yeah but at the same more, time more or less not evi evidence based if we think uh they but are all the time in this case you you have to think also in my opinion it's almost impossible that in an entire universe life grew up just in the earth yeah yeah, it's unlikely. I mean, probably in, I don't know, in Jupiter planet, for example, there are other uh, kind of lives. Yeah. Not human, not animal, but I don't but know, maybe, else. maybe virus, just virus, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, everything is possible, we don't know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But uh, now let's go to the most important topic the main topic the main topic because every everybody is uh, waiting for this so do you like pizza what a question as italian but also as guy from the earth yes i re i think pizza is one of my favorite kind of food for sure yeah what's your favorite pizza so this is a difficult question because um i'm i'm vegan um so as vegan it's difficult and different than than the years before i i decided to be vegan because back then honestly my favorite one was just the simple margarita very easy uh now you can't you can't eat a margarita as vegan for, for sure you have tons of options as vegan cheese, but it's a little bit different. So I would say the vegetarian one without the cheese, yeah. but also the margarita with the vegan cheese. Yeah, you know, you are the third person that is vegan talking about the pizza and yeah, ah. that I interviewed. Cool. It was um, uh, uh, Leder, she, she said that uh, there in the uh, USA, she, got an amazing vegan pizza sure. uh, then the, there was a kaika from stamina here in finland and he said that he is trying to be vegan but if he wants to taste a new pizzeria he have he have, has to get the margarita just sometimes to to have sure. a, to 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 make a, a good uh, uh, test for the pizzeria if it's good or not <laughs> man and the thing is you said a very cool thing about this guy from stamina because he's trying to be vegan but the thing is no one out there is perfect so i mean uh, you don't have to be vegan 100 percent. but also if you will be vegan for example half of your time it will be a big step for humanity yeah uh, but I, at the same time, I have to say, as vegan, you can be also um, the worst thing for the planet. Because if you will buy just stuff in the fucking plastic in the supermarket, no one cares if you will be, yeah. you will be vegan or not. But uh... yeah, I think that there is a lot uh, when when it comes to uh, veganism uh, things. Uh, there is a lot to take in consideration. It's not. Uh, it's not that easy. I, I'm not vegan. I, I think that I, for for me, it's it's difficult to cut off completely sure. meat. But uh, if someone is vegan, I can cook vegan stuff with no oh. problem. Because you know, from Italy, we are from Italy, and we we don't need uh, things that are not. Uh, uh, things that are um, only meat or cheese uh, we we can no. do with vegetables a lot of things there is a lot of things that you can do but also so, for example the pasta 
Yeah. If you will eat spaghetti with, I don't know, basically 90% of the pasta are vegan, you can put just uh, yeah. tomato sauce or pesto without uh, the cheese and it's vegan. Yeah, yeah, so. that's true. And I, I really like to do, during the summer, I grow my zucchini and I like ah, to do cool. zuc zucchini sauce uh, for the pasta, cool. zucchini and tomatoes. And it's so tasty, like one of the best things. <laughs> but you know what? Now that you said tasty, your pronunciation is very Finnish English. Tasty. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, I remember when I was in um, uh, Amsterdam and I was here in the place where they do the Heineken experience. And mm -hmm. uh, I was buying, it was uh, before I moved to Finland, but since I learned English, listening to Finnish metal bands, translating, and mostly, you know, it, it was uh, Sonata Artica, and uh, Tony has a really strong accent. <laughs> Back then, because now, yeah, I think he's... No, fine. but if we think in the past, I was... Uh, Not yeah. sure. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I was there, and... Uh, the girl, the cashier was like, uh, where are you from? And I was, Italy. Oh, weird, because uh, you don't have Italian accent. <laughs> so it was fun for me. And they was like, oh, okay. And then I was thinking, is this because I'm like learning English, listening to Finnish band or what? <laughs> could be, could be, could be. Yeah, but yeah, that, that was a fun thing. But let's get to the question because the, the, the word is divided in two. Does pineapple belong to pizza? Well, I just uh, bite my tongue. Does pineapple belong to pizza? So honestly, as I said before, I prefer um, just a simple pizza, but I tried with pineapple. And I have to say, if the pineapple is the natural one, I mean, you will cut the fruit by yourself, the taste is very good. But if you will buy a can with uh, pineapple and some fucking sugar, it's probably one of the worst stuff ever. Uh, so if you will buy a real pineapple, a real ananas, a real pineapple, um it's it's good it's not my favorite pizza ever but it's still good yeah yeah i i don't know i i, I don't like the idea of fruit with uh, salty things i'm a bit like also uh, when it comes to italian cuisine i remember when i was a teenager in an hotel and they served us the um hon honey melon and uh, there was some parma, par parma. I think it was palm and, and melon. Yeah, usually. and for, for for me it was like what what the hell is going on? I just put uh, the melon mm -hmm. away and I eat the, the ham. Also because I'm not a big uh, fan of uh, honey melon. Uh, it's I it's too it is sweet. I don't know. There is something about it's very that sweet. Fruit, yes, that fruit that uh, it's not. Well, nowadays, if there is on the plate, I may take also also the melon. <laughs> I'm I'm not okay. going to to be too picky, but uh, yeah, the, I I'm a bit actually I'm a bit picky. <laughs> you know what? Uh, years ago, um, I think it was five or six years ago, I was in Athens to record an album, and uh, at the end of the day. Uh, uh, we take some pizza. Uh, one of the guys from Greece, uh, he ordered a pizza with, I, I cannot say it probably, but he ordered a pizza with um, fried banana. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, I suppose it was a joke because I am Italian and I say, okay, so it's just try to order this just because I will be upset. And then I saw this pizza and it was, why? Just why? I think that the banana is really not going to work at all. Oh, but also the fried banana. 
that's that's in, that that's crazy. Well, that's our yeah, yes. story. But where did you eat the worst pizza? Uh, I think. No, no. Okay, it's very easy. I mean, I I found tons of horrible pizzas in my life in the world. I mean, in Italy, in every place, at least, is okay. Uh, in other pizzeria, is better, but in every kind of restaurant, at least, is okay. But I think the worst pizza I ever tried is the Domino's pizza. Okay, I never tried, so I'm not going. Don't to do it, please. Don't do it. Oh. And where did you eat the best pizza? So, uh, back then, um, Luca, the bus player of Temperance and me, we used to say we tried the best pizza ever in Tokyo because oh. uh, we found a very small restaurant with an Italian name and uh, the pizzaiolo there, the pizza guy, I think he did us some sort of training in Italy. And then the pizza was extremely good and we were quite impressed because in Tokyo I mean yeah. it was fucking expensive uh, but uh, it was very very good but then uh, I think just a couple of years ago I was in Napoli uh, again to record an album and uh, just in the center of Napoli uh, there is a uh, one of the first pizzeria in Napoli very old one I think 120 years ago yeah. something like that and it was probably the best pizza of my life and every time some friends of mine also from other countries is texting me ah you know i will go in napoli for holidays the first thing i i would say is you have to go there in this place <laughs> Yeah, I think that I know what pizzeria you are talking about, even if I have never been there. But uh, I think some friends told me about it. So okay. it's always the it's same place. It's always the same but place. There are, but there are tons of amazing places in Napoli. So yeah. in every pizzeria you will go, probably it will be the best of your life, I think. Yeah. So we have done with this interview. Thank you so much uh, for being my guest in this metal pizza. Thanks for your time. It was quite funny. Yeah, it's a bit different from other interviews, I think. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, would you like to say something to your fans and people that are watching this, this episode? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much for everyone to watch to watch in this, this interview. And um, for Italian people, we'll come back in January. For the European people, we'll come back in February on tour. For the Finnish people, uh, so far we have no plans, but hopefully we are we'll waiting. Be able to... uh, exactly. The thing is, I think Finland is one of the few countries in Europe we never played uh, in with uh, with Tempers because we played everywhere in Europe. We played in East, in the North. We played in Japan, USA. We're going to play in Mexico and South America next year. But so, so far, so far, no plans for Finland. But hopefully, something will happen on twenty four. I'm quite confident about it. Yeah. So, finger crossed. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you again, and see you soon. See you.